Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Mayday Alert. This is not a drill. Rudolph, out of all people, is now getting canceled by the Karens across the United States. First takes on that. I, I just can't even. I'll let you get into your thoughts, but I need to explain this to you because this is absolutely absurd. See, I got that article today, and I was from TJ, and I was like, no, nah, this has got to be a joke. It can't I be real. I thought these petitions were like not as serious, so I didn't think they were actually going to fall through. But then I read that shit, it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. People want to remove it that that doesn't make how sense. long is that ship been airing now for it's like been, i think mm, 40 is <laughs> longer than i can long longer than i could think i mean the, 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 the problem with this is parents have now for those of you that don't know there's a great article about it but parents have now um for some reason have now just gone over to uh petition sites and actually uh petitioned to take rudolph the red-nosed reindeer off the air that's absurd. And you know why, folks? On ABC. You know why, folks? What? On ABC. On ABC. We're also live on uh, Instagram, by the way, if you want to say hi. Wait, What's good, oh, everybody? Wait, wait. Oh, here we go. What's good? What's good? Yeah. Y'all tuning in right now, right? Yeah, they're in the live version. <laughs> here, here we go. Getting it live. Anyway, uh, what I was saying was this is just absurd. Uh, out of all the things you could possibly cancel, you cancel the happiest thing on earth. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I don't even, I don't even think... That movie like encouraged me out of all things. That's what I'm saying. And, 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 and that's funny that you mentioned that because the the Karens out there and, and, and the Marins, we, we got to give oh, it, there's some Marins out there. I, I shouldn't just say before. Karens. But the problem is, is that everyone says that, oh, Rudolph promotes bullying. And yeah, there's some bullying scenes, right? He's the reindeer. He's he's a little different than everybody. He gets excluded, yeah. whatever. Right. It happens. It happens. Uh, I, and, and the problem here is that the problem is parents don't want to. The, the parents don't want to instead of just signing a petition and trying to take it off the air instead make this a teaching moment with your kids sit them down watch the movie with them and say hey what are you absorbing from this are you yeah we see bullying mm -hmm. but how can we make sure that you as my child don't play this out in your world or if you see bullying tackle it and and and, and get it done and get it push it out of your environment yeah see i find that crazy because i'm just like that is true. I like the way you think like that. Right. I'm just like, at the end of the day, it's just a... It's just a just movie. A, a cartoon. How are you going to cancel a cartoon? I it's swear today you could put a rock in front of someone and they'd be offended somehow. I don't understand I don't it. understand how they could take offense to that. I mean, the problem here is, folks, the problem is here, for folks, bear with me. Again, like I said, they should be using it for a teaching moment. But it's things like this where I just laugh at my generation. I mean, it's funny that the generation that grew up with Family Guy, South Park, all these crazy shows, it's funny that they, out of all generations, they're the ones that are offended by things. Come on, people. It's really sad to see. I'm like, it, it actually, like, mind boggles me today. I mean, how it's like, yeah. I deal with other shows, too. Yeah. I mean, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger is a classic, right? We tell it to our kids, and yeah, it's been airing for so long. I mean, they did try to cancel the song Baby, It's Cold Outside, and that's a little more understandable because especially in the Me Too movement, yeah. movement, and if you watch the video, it's a little on the fence, but um, but there's a lot kind of to compare that, and then you compare it to a, a cartoon. It's it's just a, a, it's just above it's the line, deer. and 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 I actually get into that's a great transition to our main segment of the day. But um, our actual topic today uh, is we actually planned this episode a little bit, but uh, cancel culture. I mean that's been a big thing going on uh, for a few years now, and with uh, social media, it's become more easy and easy to cancel people for simply whether they believe in something or something they don't like. Uh, what's your initial takes that's on true. cancel culture? <laughs> that I feel like it's getting out of control by the minute. I saw the thing. I was watching Kevin Hart the other day, and yeah. he ever talked. He was made a joke about uh, canceling Kevin, and there was some little thing that he said it was pretty offensive. It's good, <laughs> um, and that he ended up getting a little bit of hate on Twitter and things. like Of that. course, oh, and Twitter's like, the, Come the on, way to go, guys. <laughs> I'm just Twitter He's a comedian, it's Twitter. Kevin Hart. Well, just, that's the thing. I mean, that deep. It, it's crazy that you said that because actually, I, I, in my opinion, I think comedians are the only people that are immune to cancel culture. Think mm -hmm. of Dave Chappelle, right? Yeah. He'll go out, say some stupid shit out of nowhere, right? Especially back and, then. And the response is, that's Dave Chappelle. Come on, cut him, cut him a slack. That's the thing. Comedians are meant to take you away from all this crap going on, mm -hmm. you know, politics. Uh, drama, all this stuff—they're meant to pull you away from that, and give you a good time. Yeah, it's not their laugh. job to make you feel good. You go there, some especially if you a guy like Dave Chappelle, you gotta go in there knowing that he's gonna say some stuff that's offensive, oh, and it's yeah. where you draw the line. Is where you it's it, the point where you draw the line. It's different for everyone, but if you think you're gonna get offended in a sense, don't throw yourself in 
the situation, situation in the yeah. first place, right? Exactly. I mean, it, it, it's it's bizarre. But anyway, I, I, I wanted to mention a story. You had a story uh, recently about your earrings, which I found hilarious, and I thought we should share it to the podcast. So I'd love to hear it again, as always. See, Wes, just letting you know, it, get, it does get kind of gross. It does get a little gross. Um, what is it they but say? But it's really scary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So a couple of days ago, I was chilling on my couch, you know, watching some Netflix. Yep. Chilling. It was like, I think, 2 a.m., and I felt the back of my ear. As you can see, guys, I got earrings. Yep. And they're metal. It's too I bad you don't get to show them off in the podcast with the headphones, but no. it is what it is. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But um, as you know, they're metal. So then over time, I haven't taken them off since for like a good two and a half, three week period since I got them. And whew, I was, let me tell you, I was sitting there, the back of my earring, I felt back there and it was just gone. Gone. Didn't feel it. I was like, what are you like? I was like, huh, what? I went to the bathroom, checked, looked in the mirror. I was like, where the hell is it? Non invisible. I can't see it. Don't know where the hell it is. Mm-hmm. I was like, Wait a minute. So I was like, uh, I tried pulling my earring out. Still tugged. I was like, oh, wait a minute. It's all stuck. Clicking yeah, me, it's right? like all pulling. Together. <laughs> I love those moments like that where you're kind of like panicking. And then you like, it's that moment where you're just like kind of like thinking. You're like, uh. It just clicked. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, yo. This shit is happening for real. <laughs> exactly. The back of my metal piece earring was no. inside my earlobe. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's oh, no, inhaled. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely inhaled it. Took it away. Swallowed that. Sw- your whole ear swallowed the yep. metal backing? Yep. That can't be good for your yeah. skin. No. <laughs> it, was, it was inside of me. I felt weird. So I ended up panicking. I was like, damn, do I have to go to the hospital for this right. type of shit? I can't get it out. So I ended up doing like a whole <laughs> operation on my fucking shit. Doing like. My fingers. You turned into bloody. Grey's Anatomy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I should be the star Stop surgeon. <laughs> oh my god, um, and I'm doing a whole surgical removal with my bare fingers, and all bloody, and it started getting all gross back there. But Ugh. I know. Ever since then, I've been taking them out every time I like. Don't sleep with them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> don't wear them in the shower. Like, just take them out. That's probably a good call. Um. But yeah, that that's some scary stuff. Freaked me out. Out I of nowhere. Point. I mean, if your life, if you complain about your life being boring, I mean, I guess you can't anymore. You got some stuff to work with now. So, um, oh, yeah. that's the that's the only good thing. But um, I wanted to do something fun uh, that on this episode, Marvin and I are trying to continue to uh, do our own thing and 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 be as creative as we possibly can. But we got some cool questions from people. I told people to uh, send some talking points, send some questions, and we got we got a few good questions. And Same one of the ones I wanted to start with because I love reflecting on just our friendship and just our time together. But one of the questions I got was. Um, what is your favorite memory from high school? And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'll, I'll give you some time. But um, I kind of thought for a second, and I mean, I, I have a favorite memory c- coming out of nowhere. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Would you say it was the earlier side or later side? I mean, I'm going to say it's probably in the middle. It's around like the oh. beginning of sophomore year. So, or I'm sorry, the beginning of junior year. So I'll consider that um, I'll, I'll consider that the, um, the middle of the year. But chemistry. Or not chemistry, I'm sorry, marine bio. Marine Man, the trip bio. to the aquarium. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Legendary Miss Murray. I don't know how educational that was as opposed to just a waste of time. And that's no disrespect to Miss Moran. It no just turned it just turned into <laughs> something. It just turned into something that probably shouldn't have been the way it was. We, I mean, the minute we saw the penguins, everyone was just clowning at that point. I know. It was just... What was the point of it? Literally, what was the point? There was no point. Absolutely zero point. I mean... But we got there, and, and I love, there's a great argument you have. Uh, we're, we're in the bus, and we're kind of going, we're like, man, we're really going to the aquarium right now out of all places. And it is marine bio, folks, and it I is educational that, yeah. in our own way. But, um, I mean, that, 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 that was good on its own. But what would what, what, you say your favorite memory is? <laughs> Probably my favorite memory was, no bullshit, like when we all met, like the friend group. Mm. We all started Which is kind of like what we talked about last week. Exactly. But. But that was just one of my favorite moments. But I think, can I list a second? Yeah. All right. The second moment was when we <laughs> used to hang out with Demetrius. Oh, yeah. Shout out right. Demetrius yep. if you're watching. I know he's doing AAU or something like that. Yeah. I hope all is well. Been Six, eight for no reason. <laughs> Six, eight Greek male. It's crazy. I know. Um, Back then we used to um, paintball. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. We tried to get the whole friend group out there, but it ended up. Not I'm never going there again. Tough time. Probably <laughs> memories. PTSD. PTSD. 
Oh my god, I got rocked. But I'm not gonna get into that. You're not gonna get into that. Well, anyway, that's a great uh, talking point, moving point. So I was talking to my mom today, uh, recently, and we got into the talk of uh, tattoos, right? So apparently, tattoos are bad. You know, they won't get you a job. All this, all this nonsense. Whatever. What is your take on tattoos? And then I'll get into mine. But I, I just think the whole tattoo argument these days is pretty old school at this rate. I mean, I don't understand like the point of why people care so much if you put something on your skin that's your body, right? I mean, shout out, that's your body, Josh Azo, if you're watching this. But uh, I've never gotten the point, but I know you don't want to get a tattoo, but what's your kind of take on that? Uh, I don't, I'm not interested in getting tattoos. I don't, right. nothing's drawing my attention unless, I don't know, some some way down the road I find something meaningful or some, yeah. something significant happens uh, to me. I mean, the right tattoo there. I've wanted since I was 14. I mean, for those of you that don't know, I live in Chicago uh, for part of my life, like for vacations, my dad and step family out there. They're great. I love going out there. It's too bad I haven't gone out there in like four or five months. Um, but I've always wanted since I was 14 to get the area codes of Boston and Chicago, 312-617. I think it's meaningful, and I think it's dope for a first tattoo. So I got five months till I'm, till I'm 18, so the countdown is, is live here because uh, it's happening. My dad is probably going to be mad at me I'm saying this, but it's happening. I mean, uh, <laughs> the deal was if I got some scholarship money from college, the deal was I could get a tattoo. That happened, so it's happening. Tattoos happening. Probably multiple more after that. But oh my, he's it gonna is, go on a spree. It is what it is. Whatever. But I always uh, say once you get a tattoo, you can't stop getting them. But this is again with the you know, we always I feel like we journey into the discussions of things that no one wants to talk about. And this is just one of the one things I've always wanted to talk about. But um the problem is with these tattoos and the problem is we think of them is I just never understand how does a, a writing on you describe you as a person? It's just more into you get more into generalizing and, 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 and I I've never understood it. I've never even heard that. Not gonna lie. Well, no. <laughs> it's I mean, like, it, it's true. It's true. In the in the, in the in the old times, there used to. Well, not in the old times. Let's be real. Twenty years ago, it seems old, but it's not that long ago. Mm -hmm. A few years before you were born. I mean, a few years before you were born, like a tattoo was like. I mean, when I was little, I would see people with tattoos and get scared somehow for no reason. Oh yeah, because you think the, they're. But but bad but, but, but 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 why? Well, right? Why mm. are we programmed to think like that? Like, this wasn't is, there an era that was like... This is, why, this is why sometimes I need, I need to do psychology, I feel like, in uh, college. Because sometimes I'm like thinking, like, why do we just think like that? No one ever told me that. But for some reason, little seven-year-old me, I see a motorcycle game pull up with all these tattoos, leather jackets, and I'm like, oh, I got to watch out for these guys. But why? Some of them are the nicest I guess, people I know. Yeah. So I guess I, they made them feel cool. Right. Or, or, not I even guess. that it feels cool. I mean, you just want to identify. What's the problem with uh, you know getting a marking on your skin? And who cares if it's shown? What mm -hmm. what difference does that make you as a person? Right? It doesn't change anything about you. Maybe a face tattoo. Maybe a face tattoo <laughs> is the only. Th that's a little bit of a stretch. Like I don't what? Think it, like just anything on your face, maybe. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> like what? Else, what would you put in your face? That I'm not saying I would. I'm just saying maybe a face tattoo would discriminate you, rightfully so, mm -hmm. depending on what job you get into business. You walk mm -hmm. into a business meeting, you got a huge tattoo on your left cheek. You're like, come on, how am I supposed to take you seriously now? Okay. Um, but the problem is, like I said, this is why I said I want to go into psychology. Like, why are our minds programmed to do that? Like, we or, 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 or we see a big, muscly guy with, like, long hair and a beard when we're little, and we, like, Oh, he's a little more scary. And that goes into the concept of stranger danger. Like, why are, we, why are we taught to be afraid of strangers? Like, how is that going to make us, like, any better people in our life? No clue. Did your dad teach you stranger danger? Look, yeah. yeah. <laughs> stranger so I used, danger! I used to be walking streets in Malton, <laughs> lurking like a little black boy in his backpack. Yeah, you know, just, just walking. Just, just literally, <laughs> just minding his own business. But... The problem so is <laughs> our whole connections in, in general are, are based off of, of, of strangers. Like, you were a stranger to me freshman year, so why are we teaching our kids these days? I mean, it seems like folks... I guess so environment-wise? Yeah. Depends on where you are. And I don't want anyone to think we keep getting wrapped up in these topics between a parent and kid, but that's just the things we're going down today, and so that's how it's going to be. But the, the thing is, why do we emphasize the idea of, of, of being scared of strangers? Everyone's a stranger. You're, you're a friend, but you started out as a stranger. I didn't Everyone know you. Everyone starts... Everyone, mm -hmm. other than your parents and immediate family. So what? Exactly. So so let me so let me say this. Ready? You're gonna play my son, of course. <laughs> I'm gonna play the dad. All right. Come up to me. Say you met some dude on the street. Ready? Play it out. Hey, dad. I met a friend on the street. No. Uh, no. Jimmy. No. Strangers are dangerous. 
Do not go anywhere near someone you don't know. They might hurt you. Don't ever take offers. Don't ever get in a van Damn. if someone has candy. Damn. I mean, I don't even think candy these days is what will lead kids to a van. you got to get some, like, free Wi-Fi these days. <laughs> I mean, candy's a little outdated. If I was a little kid, he's like, get candy. I'd be like, I can get candy anyway. <laughs> Got any sure. game? Got any games? Okay. <laughs> you got a Nintendo or something? <laughs> All right, so back to the back to the uh, back to the uh, back to the segment. No, Jimmy, no. And what's but your immediate? He's nice to me. But Jimmy, that could lead to bad things. He's nice to you because he wants to tempt you to kidnap you or 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 take you away or traffic you. No, he doesn't. He just wants to be my friend. Jimmy, go to bed. Uh, or I... no, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, no. Oh. Jimmy, no. Go. All right. See. Ooh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> see, these are the things. See, these are the things that we're programmed to do that we're told at a young age. And I think that truly alters the way we think about people. I was sort of my, my mom taught me stranger danger, but not as, as crazy as you would you would think. Some, I mean, I, I know it can be worse. But why are we teaching our kids? To be scared of strangers, I've, I've never understood that. Drop in the comments on the live if you what if you think if you think you know why, but we can't seem to know why. Also, for Figure those of you watching on YouTube or listening, this is a late night podcast. It is eleven oh three p.m. Yeah, We're not Jay really Chirp. on our. But I do want I do want to give a quick shout out to a kid that um, who's been super nice to us, a stranger for one that I've never met in my yeah, life before. Yeah. His name is Justin Gates. I think he's on the live chat right now. Oh, he Justin shouted Gates. us he shouted us out on his podcast, which is just crazy to me because I know. I know it's just I, I know it's just a kid in Massachusetts, but the fact mm. that people are listening to us, that, that feels pretty good. I know it's better than <laughs> no one listening. It feels pretty good. So shout out to Justin Gates. I'll leave his link yeah, in the shout description. Out Justin, thank you. I'll leave in his link in the description. This kid seems like a genius. Uh, he has a whole podcast dedicated to marketing, business strategies, all this, cr all this, all the I shouldn't genius. say crap, but all this stuff that I'm nowhere near accustomed to. This kid like seems like he's a smart kid. He's on the right track. You guys should check him out. Definitely. But anyway, going back to this whole stranger thing, I mean, I've never understood it. I keep saying that. But again, when we if you see yourself as a parent, how do you see yourself going about that situation? It depends. How old's, how old's my kid? It doesn't matter. Just yeah. in general. I mean, I guess I would be all right with it. Just OK, <laughs> I guess that's fine, Jimmy. Just don't Jimmy. <laughs> Damn, Jimmy, Jimmy's on a roll here. I know, Jimmy's out here meeting new people all day, uh, and which I appreciate. Jimmy's a social butterfly. Yeah, all right, that's cool. That's Be cool. a social butterfly. Sure. That's fine. Well, by the way, congratulations again. This man got into Butler University. Yes, sir. Let's get yes, it. Yes, sir. Let's get it. Yeah. Butler oh. Bulldog, baby. I can see you out there in Indianapolis. It's a good little town. Get me out of here, bro. Um, <laughs> out of Boston. Yeah, I know. I'm ready to go. I mean, the whole idea, everyone here is, I feel like, so, like, into New England, and I love New England, don't get me wrong. Love the Dunks, love the Pats, let's go, let's go New England. I'll always be New England at heart. Yes. But think of how much of the country, I mean, you have all this country to yeah, explore, let me, let me and you really mean to tell me you want to stay in New England? Yeah, Come on. My wings. If that's Come you, on. you do you. If, if that's you, you do you, right? I'm on the track where I'm ready to go. I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to let get out. my wings, meet new people. Yeah, strangers. I'm ready. Dude, like, let me tell you, when I was at Ohio visiting school. Miami, people, Ohio, right? Yeah. yeah. Your number one choice still? Yeah. Yeah. And when I was out there, people, like, I stepped out the plane. People were like, oh, hi, are you lost? Do you know where to go? That's mad different than Right? You would never see different that. Than people in, in Boston walking around with the AirPods, hoodie, walking by you like. <laughs> for Demon you, like, time. The, the Midwest is just different. Like I mean, the Midwest is different. They will go out of their way to help you. They want to welcome you. I've always felt like here, nice. I've always felt like people here in Massachusetts are just very territorial, and and what's that's done is kind of just created a a toxic. Not uh, and I'm. It sounds like I'm dissing on Boston, but I'm not trying to. I'm just no, I'm just, just bringing up my perspective and telling it how it is. But yes, my sir. experience in the Midwest has been everyone's so welcoming. They want to show you. They want to show you things. I uh, my number one school is the University of San Diego, actually. But over this week, I've kind of had like a a little why is that so a mind blowing moment? Only because I want to go into TV and film. Like my dream, if you ask me right now, I want to be on ESPN talking about sports, about how yeah. you know all these whatever or the news maybe. But I'm looking at all these schools. <laughs> Do you I'm the weather, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, no weather. No. Oh, uh, you don't. <laughs> So we're going to have a little cold front here on the left side. And then uh, coming in on the right is a storm coming in and uh, and temps in the low hot. And then you got to make small talk on the weather. So it's kind of weird. You got to make some weird puns. You're definitely going to need some sunscreen today for the beach days. Probably no sunscreen here, but definitely uh, take out the raincoats for uh, Saturday. Yeah, no, that's not really me. Um, <laughs> but, but if you ask me now, I'm trying to get into a TV studio 
behind a camera, or, or excuse me, in front of a camera. Got you. And I'm looking at San Diego and Marquette gotcha. University in Milwaukee, bleh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Those two are probably the two. One, well, I'm going to end up at one of those. I'm pretty confident. Gotcha. I really wanted to go to San Diego for the longest time. You know that. I got yep. obsessed. I started obsessed with lifestyle. I, know, I mean, who who doesn't want to go to San Diego? It's 72 I degrees. Mean, you, like you said, you just want to go right from class, go right to the surfboard, hop right in the ocean, get some food. Refresh. Yeah. I mean, not like, you, not like you have time for that in, high, in college or anything, oh. but we make time. Okay. We, we make time. But anyway, the San Diego lifestyle kind of took, o- took over in my head, um, and I was kind of like, okay, they have a great communications and media program, but it's only a program. Marquette has their whole school, Deirdre College of Communications, digital media, advertising, marketing, broadcasting, all this stuff. So in my head, and this is a tip for any juniors that are applying, you don't always want to go to the school that you like the most. You, you may want to think, what can this school do for me? And it sounds a little selfish, a little douchey, but mm-hmm. you have to think. You're paying you know, five-digit figures to go to this institution. You need to make sure you have a return on investment. So I'm looking at these programs. I'm like, which one is going to be the best for me? I see, yeah, San Diego has a good program. But Marquette has a whole school full of different programs. So in reality, which one you want? Exactly. Choose. So exactly. So I say I want to go. I want to be in front of the camera on a news show one day, right? How can I get there the quickest and facts this way? Most likely the one with the school. More connections, more opportunities. And Milwaukee is a, is a really big city with, with full of different opportunities. Um, and in in my head, I'm kind of saying, okay, San Diego rocks. But like I said. What's going to get and, and, and like I said, for juniors looking to apply, even sophomores, even younger, think of that ahead. It's OK if you don't know what you want to do. But if you have a goal, you got to think what's going to get me to that goal the fastest. Right. Yeah. You have a goal out in front of you and you got four years in between where you are now. You choose how you want. Exactly. So I, get I think I'll be fine whether I go. I, could, I, I feel like I'm, I could go to any school and end up doing what I want to do and, and make it a good With experience. Same amount of education. Same amount of education. Because the thing with college these days is everyone's so caught up in college. Oh, I need to go to Harvard. I need to go to Yale. At the end of the day, you all get the same piece of paper. A little dip- <laughs> uh, a, a you can go bachelor's offline. degree. <laughs> Literally right. offline. Go to Southern New Hampshire University. Save some same money. Thing. I've never gotten the whole point of, oh, my God, my son's so perfect. And shouts to you if you got into Harvard or Yale. I mean, that's hard work in that's itself. That's some serious. <laughs> but let's be honest. At the end of the day, you're getting an education, a college education in itself, a liberal arts education is is pretty much all you need and unless you're getting like a harvard law degree which is pretty big deal come on now or doctor let me know we shouldn't get caught up in the names of schools and instead we need to be like listen i could go to the school in the middle of nowhere in montana and it might be the best for me sure you're laughing at me i'm in the middle of nowhere montana with the freaking buffaloes and and you could have been at bc in boston but whatever right if you think you miami like whatever if you are at a school where you think that you're going to get to your goal the quickest, fastest, and most efficient way. Screw everyone that tells you differently, right? Mm-hmm. And that, I wish, I mean, I, I wish I thought of that in a sense before. Because with me, I get caught up in names. Oh, you know, Marquette's cool. It's a it's a well-known school. Like, so what if it's well-known? doesn't matter. You choose how you want to do it. Exactly. So it doesn't matter what they say. I've taken up a lot of speaking time, but I'd love to hear your points on uh, on colleges now in terms of that. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but let's hear Marvin's take. CEO putting me on the spot. But, I mean, what? I'm just hoping I'm like, I get into my first college. Mm-hmm. The main one that I really, really want. Yep. Miami University, Ohio, Oxford. Um, what are they? The what's their What's their mascot? It's an owl, baby. Owl. Woo, woo. I'll take it. Yeah. Public Ivy. Not public, private Ivy. Private Ivy. That's a big deal. If you get to- in, that's I huge. I totally did not think I was going <laughs> to. Like I, uh, but that's the thing. Another thing that goes two point eight GPA. Hey, no. hey, listen, that, listen, that listen. Gives it to anybody can do it. <laughs> anyone can do it. For those of you watching live, and for those of you watching on YouTube, I was feeling anyone bold. can do it. Feeling bold. You gotta feel you bold gotta, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. When because you college, the thing is, if if you're start. if you're not bold, a, 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 any successful thing, you have mm-hmm. to be bold. You have to yeah. have a little bit of skill, a little bit of talent, and a little bit of good luck. But you have to go and get it. Have the we didn't. Did goal. we? Let's be honest. Did we really think this podcast thing was gonna work? No. Mm-mm. We said in March, let's do a podcast, and you were like, huh, "That'd be dope." <laughs> <laughs> it was, I didn't think he was serious, <laughs> but we did it. You gotta Smash. be bold sometimes. You, you know, I I, I might want to start making music. Seems a little bold. I'm sure some of you watching right now are probably like, <laughs> "Yeah, sure, you want to make Same music." Well, too. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's good. the universal, the, uh, the universal teenage like reaction. <laughs> yeah, it's like goofy. Yeah, default reaction. <laughs> default reaction. But listen, you gotta be bold. And going back to your GPA thing, yes, anyone can freaking do it. And I'll emphasize this from the jump: anyone mm-hmm. can freaking do it. I'm so tired of getting caught up in, oh, you need to be a bookworm, a genius. Listen, everyone has their own skills and abilities. And I think if you show that to a school and just show them in your life in general, you're going to go far with whatever you do. Not everyone wants a bookworm. Again, shouts to the people that have 4.9 DGPAs. You're doing good. Great for you. That's hard work, like I said. But wow. listen, at the end of the day, you a college wants someone that's going to go into the community, make it a better place, bring their talents to good use. Make that money. You got to make that make bread. That money. Right? When we, and, and you know me. You know us. We want a good, we want a big, good lifestyle. So, you know. We gotta get some. We gotta get to a good spot. We gotta get that bread. So with that, uh, I do want to mention for those of you that don't know, uh, Marvin and I do a lot for our school, and it's getting to the point where it's a little funny uh, because we're kind of like all over the place. We have a show, and uh, we'll take a minute um, in the podcast on YouTube. We'll show you some highlights of our show real quick. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It sure feels good to be back in the studio, and nothing's (laughs) much. I want to talk about little baby real quick. Okay, let's hear how he got. Snatched from his awards. Okay. And Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah. Megan Thee Stallion. I mean, she's a she's great. Don't get me wrong. She's great. She's a powerful woman. But let's be real. Lil Baby was on top this year. I mean, gets me heated. Yeah. Lil Baby was all over the features. This I know. Year. I know. All of the singles, keeping everybody up to date. Up to date. Came out of nowhere, too. And the problem is, all these people that are like, Lil Baby's the GOAT. He's been on this ride, bro. From the be- from 2017, he's been on the ride. No, like, where have you been? I know. Where was your head at? I know. My God. He got robbed. The Grammys are a little rigged. I've been seeing, and I believe it. The amount of, s- of times I've seen people get snatched. Like, who else? The Weeknd? The that weekend, he that got- one heats me up. Yep. That one really you heats me up. You can't tell me y'all weren't listening to that album going to bed. <sighs> Let me know. She pulled up to the <laughs> studio. Exactly. It's a good album. But anyway, thank you for tuning into the podcast again. Like, comment, share with your friends. We are coming at you every Monday for an right. episode. My name's T. John Raft. I'll see you next time. My name's Marvin. Check you guys out. Mm-hmm.